to welcome back and uh, this is Mr. Hassan's math channel and this is question number three from the international A level at Excel pure mathematics P4 October 2021 exam and the first question here is about <coughs> partial fractions where we have to split this fraction into separate terms separate fractions and um, they've already actually given us the correct form and all we have to do is find the values of A, B, C, and D. Okay, so they gave us this form. If they hadn't give us this, given us this form, sometimes they might say, you know, express this as partial fractions. Then we should know how this setup occurs. Okay, so what you'll realize is that what we have to do is we have to look at, we have to first check if it's a proper fraction or an improper fraction. If it's an improper fraction, um, that that will be when the numerator has an order uh, which is the same or greater than the order of the denominator. The order being the highest power that it has. So the numerator has a power of 3 as its highest power. The denominator has a power of 2 as its highest power. As If you, um, if you um, expand this bracket, you're going to get an x squared as the highest power. So the difference between the orders is 1. That means you're going to have a quotient like a whole number part, a mixed number will split up into a whole number part and then a proper fraction. And the whole number part will be um, a linear, okay, a linear um, expression. And that's where the AX plus B comes from. That's like the whole number part. It's not, uh, not in the fraction. That's a linear part. That's because the difference between them is 1. So that's linear. If the difference between them was 0, then it would just be a constant, A. Okay. If the difference between them was 2, then it would be a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c. And then you have your linear um, factors in the denominator, which then split up into two proper fractions. Once you've changed this into an, a mixed number, those will be proper fractions. So, of course, for this to be a proper fraction, the numerator has to be in order less than the denominator. So we have a constant over x and a constant over x plus 3. So that's how, it's, how you would split it up. Here they have kindly given you the form that it goes into. Now we have to find the values of A, B, C, and D. So what we're going to do, to, in order to do that, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x times x plus 3, which is the LCM of the denominators of this identity, basically. So if you multiply by x times x plus 3, the fractions will be cancelled out, and then we'll be able to sort this out. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to keep this as 3x cubed, plus 8x squared minus 3x minus 6 is equal to, now I'm going to multiply ax plus b by all of this. So it's going to be ax times x plus 3 times ax plus b. And then I multiply c over x by this, and when I multiply c over x by this, the x's will cancel, and you're left with c times x plus 3. And then multiply d by this, the, the x plus 3's will cancel, and you're left with d times x. Now we've got to find the values of a, b, c, and d. Now there's different methods we could use. Some, a lot of people like to do substitution. Some people like to compare coefficients. Sometimes you have to use a variety of both. What I'm going to do here is first I'm going to substitute x equals 0 because that's a nice easy number to use and that will get rid of this term and this, this whole term. It will become 0 times all of this, 0 times d. You will be left with the c term and on this side, all of these will become 0, except for the last one. You have negative 6, and this is going to be 3c. So we can work out that c is equal to negative 2. So that's going to, that's going to be your c over there. And then we've got to count, find out uh, values of the other letters. So another thing we could do, we could put x equals negative 3, uh, or substitute x equals negative 3 into the whole thing. In that case, these two terms will become 0, and I'll be left with... Um, this with negative 3 put into it, which would be like 3 times negative 27, no, th yeah, 3 times negative 27 plus 8 times 9 my, plus 9 minus 6. Well, I personally think that the easiest thing to do would be to what's called co um, compare coefficients. So I'm going to compare the coefficients on the left-hand side of the identity and the right-hand side of the identity. Okay, I'm going to compare them for the x cubed. So I'll th ask myself, how many x cubes are there on the left side? Well, it's just 3 x cubed. The coefficient of x cubed is 3. And that must be the same, because it's identity as a number of x cubed on the right side. 
And on the right side of this identity, you have the only x cubed term that will be produced is when you do x times x times ax. That will be ax cubed. So a will be the only um, x cubed term. It will be the coefficient of x cubed will be a. So you have a equals 3. So we found the value of a. And we can also compare the, uh, the, the, for example, the constants as well. It's always easiest to compare the highest and the lowest order things because normally there's less of those terms um, that combine together to give you your term. So, but the trouble here, if I try to compare uh, the constants, the only um, thing I'm going to find is C because none of these will be constants because you multiply all of these by X. D is multiplied by X. 3 times C okay is the only constant and that's equal to minus six and that's exactly what we found by just putting x equals zero so there's no point in, in using that because we've already found c so i'm then going to turn to the next order down which is x squared so on the left side i've got eight x squared and on the right side we've got to think about what the x squared terms will be now there will be no x squareds from c or d the x squared terms will be from this bracket so if you think about it, if i do x times x that's going to be x squared, so then times b, that's going to be bx squared. And if I do x times 3 times a, that will be 3ax squared, that's plus 3a. Those, those are the only terms that will give me x squared. Okay, because if you think about a multiply an x and an x and a constant, or an x and a constant and an x. Those are the only ways of getting that. There's, you know, if I do x this x times this x, times, well, there's no constant here, so... That will give me x cubed. So you're going to have b plus 3a. We know already a is 3. We can find what b is. So you have 8 equals um, b plus 9. Therefore, b is equal to 8 minus 9, which is negative 1. So we found b. So now we've got to find d. So for d, we can compare the x's, for example. Um, if we compare the x's on the left side, you've got negative 3x. On the right side, the x terms that we'll get is when we do x times 3 times b. We have to have x times two constants. So that's going to be 3bx. And you're going to have c times x. And then you're going to have d times x. All right, so we already know what c and b are. So 3 times minus 1. And, and c is negative 2. So negative 2 minus 2 plus d. So now we've got minus 3 equals... Uh, minus 3 minus 2, which is minus 5 plus d. So put that as minus 5 plus d. So we can say d is equal to minus 3 um, plus 5, which is 2. So we got d equals 2. So here we've been asked to find the values of a, b, c, and d. So we found them. Okay, the question didn't tell us to put it back in this form, although putting in this form would actually be useful but we need that more i think for the next question which is coming up now okay now for part b it says a curve has equation y equals g of x where x is greater than zero using the part answer to part a find g dash of x means find the derivative of g the function g so we already found um the values of a b c and d a was three b was minus one c was minus two and d was three so we've written in this form now what we have to do is we have to differentiate this. Before differentiating this, we have to write it in a form which we can differentiate. So it's 3x minus 1 minus 2 times x to the power of minus 1 plus 2 times in brackets x plus 3 to the power of minus 1. So if I differentiate this, this will give me 3. This will be a constant become 0. I have to multiply by the power. That gives me plus 2x to the power of minus 2. Take 1 from the power. And here I've got to multiply by the power. So I have minus 2, x plus 3 to the power of minus 2, multiplied by the differential what's inside the function, which is just 1. So that's fine. So that's the um, differential. I can write it in this form. 2 over x squared minus 2 over x plus 3 squared. Okay, so that's the derivative. Um, and that's the answer to part B. That's done. Then it says, hence explain why g dash x is greater than 3 for all values of x in the domain of g. Okay, so the domain of g is x is greater than or equal to 0. So we know that y equals g of x. 
and x is greater than greater than zero. So that means um, the values of x can only be positive. So if we look at what we have here, we have g dash of x equals three plus, and we got this. So what I'll do is I will just make this into one fraction, which is going to give me x squared x plus three squared, and that will give me two times x plus three squared minus two x squared. All right. Now, whatever value x is, okay, um, this whole thing is going to be positive. Okay, this whole thing is going to be positive. Because if you, for example, if x is, say, um, you know, like, if x is great, x has to be greater than zero, so it can't be, it can't be zero. So, like, for example, x is two, whatever, whatever value x is, this is going to be positive. So this is going to give you a positive value. All right, and the numerator, whatever value x is, this will also be positive. Okay, this will also be positive because if you um, put um, any 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 value of x in here, this is going to be a number which is greater than this value. We know that two x plus three squared, okay, minus two x squared will always be greater than zero if x is greater than zero, because um, whatever value put in here, this this number that's going to be squared is going to be bigger than this number. They're both multiplied by two. You can take two out. If you divide by two, you got x plus three. Let me write this over here. You got two times x plus three squared minus two x squared. Okay, that's equal to. Um, I mean, yeah. So if if you take the two out, you're going to have x plus three squared minus x squared. Okay, now this thing here is always going to be something that's positive because if x is greater than zero if x is greater than zero then x squared sorry then x plus three squared minus x squared will also be greater than zero because this is going to be a bigger number than this all right this will always be a bigger number than that okay um you know whatever value x is this will be bigger than that because this is something bigger squared all right you can't put, for example, x is, is a negative number in here, even if you wanted, you couldn't. So um, it's always going to be bigger than that. And therefore, we can say, therefore, that g of g dash of x, okay, will also, you'll have equal 3 plus something which is greater than 0. The whole of this will be greater than 0. 3 plus, okay, um, something greater than 0. All right, so this will always be 3 plus something positive. Therefore, g dash of x will be always greater than zero. Okay, so we can say g, g dash of x will always be greater than zero, as we can mention this part that's added to it: two over x squared minus two two over x plus three squared is greater than zero. Therefore, this will always be greater than zero. Something like that. It's only worth one mark. So as long as you give an, an answer that makes sense, that basically you can determine that this will always be something positive. Okay, if this is always positive, therefore, you know, then g, g dash of x will always be greater than three. Okay, because you're going to be adding something to three always. Okay, so this means this is um, always greater than c in three in the domain of g, meaning when x is greater than zero. Okay, so there's the answer to question three of this uh, paper, P4 paper. Other questions you might want to answer from this paper will be found in this playlist over here. Other questions from um, this topic of partial fractions. And I also, um, I'll put the partial fractions part here, and I'll put the differentiation part here. Um, and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.